All right, we're gonna start assembly of the rear end. A few option parts that I use. One being the optional C block. This block utilizes the square pill like the D block does instead of the round pill. And what this will allow me to do is narrow the rear pivot by one millimeter. So my location I run is this hill all the way in. So instead of it normally being centered, now it's moved over. And I think it's about one millimeter narrower on the rear pivot is what I measured, which gives you more rear grip, more stability in the rear end. Cars quite. I've been doing that since SIC, and it's been where I've been really liking it. It's working really good. So that's one option I use. Another is I use medium hardness of arms. I use the medium ones instead of the soft. They're going to be a little firmer, a little less arm flex, which is just going to make it more consistent as far as handling goes. And then obviously when it gets hot outside, I'll be switching over to the hard, the hard arms. Right now it's still pretty cold, so the harder arm, the harder the plastic is, the higher your risk is of breaking them. But I have had uh, zero issues with our arms. Our arms are actually fantastic arms. Some of the best I've ever <coughs> used across the board. I really like our arms, so. Okay, <clears throat> so then something that has to be done. Clean these up. I like to just clean every bit of flashing off that I can. I hate I hate all that flashing from manufacturing. I clean it all up, every little bit. Not required, but something I do. Alright, so there is a modification that has to be done to this rear gearbox, and it's right here, where that camber link's going to set. Can you see that? Where that camber link's going to ride? Because I drilled that fourth camber link hole in the shock tower to be able to use that fourth hole, this has got to be dremeled down pretty substantially, pretty good amount. Basically, you got to cut, you got to dremel this out like all the way down right above that screw, like straight down here. So quite a bit of material has actually got to come off of that. So we'll go ahead and do that. out nicely the whole thing just flew apart <laughs> all right 
it. That one's pretty close, but we're going to have to change. So, if you can see that, I cut that out a lot more than that. Look at that. So that is for clearance when you use that lowest camber link hole so that your uh, tie rod don't get it get bound up on the case. You get all super tight. You don't want that. That's the only modification on that, and that's not necessary unless you're going to use that fourth camber link hole. Like I said, just another tuning option, not something that is required in any way. Just another setup option. <laughs> Assemble the uh, pinion. So here's scoop on these pinion bearings. These stock, if you only upgrade four bearings on this entire car from stock, it should be the pinion bearings. When I got my test kit back in October and did some testing, these 
bearings failed and ruined the ring and pinion. So I would suggest upgrading these so you don't cost yourself $50 in dip gears. Um, Senate RC has a very, very good bearing kit for this car. And J&T bearings is what I've been using the past six years. Um, I use the J&T um, NMB bearings. And they are absolutely awesome as well. So up, I would suggest upgrading those bearings. Alright, so for the diff shimming, putting the pinion together, um, manual says use one shim inside there behind the bearing. I use two. Moves the pinion out a little bit and gives a little bit um, more contact of the teeth with the actual ring gear. So it'll last a little bit longer and be more durable. Pinion in. Nice and smooth. One thing you're going to want to do is be sure you clean your set screw off with some brake cleaner or something similar. Clean the grease off of that so that your Loctite actually works. Uh, so kind of just go down in there too with those threads. Okay, now then, just put a little bit of uh, Loctite on that, I spin it around here, make sure it's in the threads. Screw that down. Make sure you get the set screw actually on the flat spot of the pinion, that's pretty important. You're going to butt that all the way up, but you're not, with two in there, you got to be careful not to over push this too tight to where it binds. You want it just, just tight enough, there's no play, but there's also no bind. So that right there is perfect. Crank that as hard as you can, basically, and then wipe off the excess Loctite. So there's that pinion install. That's all good. Next up, we will go ahead and drop the diff in. So I know from previous experience, you're going to put the shim opposite side of the gear, pushing it away. With it brand new, a lot of times one shim is all it needs. When you run this car for about a gallon or so, this case will loosen up, all the tolerances will loosen up, gear mesh will loosen up, and you're going to probably add a second shim. But the key is to make sure that there's no side-to-side -side movement in the diff. There is a little bit, so I'm going to see if it'll take a second shim right now. You just don't want to wedge a shim in there and, and bind it up. So if you put it in there and it's tight, tight, then you got to take it back out. That pretty much went right in, so that's that's going to be good. And then there's zero play in that. Now, using two shims on that pinion and forcing that out, that is going to make, when your car is brand new, that's going to make this really, really tight on the mesh, being brand spanking new gears. But they will free up <clears throat> within the first few tanks of running your gears will free up and they'll mate a lot deeper in the uh, teeth 
and your gears will last, they'll be smoother and they'll last a lot longer. I've done it both ways and this is the this is definitely the way to do it. So you just have to just ignore that little bit of crunch when they're brand new because they're too tight and they'll break right in. <coughs> so that's where I, this one came out with two shims here, pushing that over. And like I said, two shims on that pinion. And we'll drop this case on. Two right there. Be really careful with these, they're not super, super tight. I go in on the softest setting on my grill. And I'll just Checking with the hand by hand. All right, so you can hear how tight that is. Very, very tight. But like I said, it. I've built uh, two brand new kits this way, and I built two brand new kits with uh, one shim in there. And the gears are far better in the ones that I've done with two shims on that pinion. So. That's that's the way I do it. You can do it with one, and your gears will be free right off the bat. They won't be tight like this brand new. But, in my opinion, once these break in, this is much, much better. So, just the way I do it. Alright. We'll go ahead and attach the C-block. I like to use... Like I said, this option C block, and I use the pill that puts the arm <clears throat> on the furthest end location all the way down. That's what I use for the C block location. <clears throat> I've tried it all. That's what I like the best currently. I either use this location or I use the middle location all the way in, which I think this is one degree of anti squat. The middle location is two, the top is three. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's what I use 90% of the time is this location right here get them ready to mount I do a little bit of I'm a little crazy with the cleanup I clean all these little edges up from the factory I like that all nice and clean these edges on the outside not necessarily change anything it just just much cleaner build Okay, that one's done. That one's done. So for the arms, super critical that you take the bind out of this the hinge pin where the arm is. You want that to fall through. That one's actually pretty good straight from the factory. That's that's the best one I've seen from WRC. That's pretty good. That actually falls through. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what you want. That one requires zero modification. As well as that one. They have been really doing a good job at making changes to these kits. Every single one I've got, 
from a newer batch and I just keep anytime I get a new one it's better than the last one I built so that is pretty awesome that that's good I'll check these soft ones that come with the kit that's absolutely perfect so well since these arms are perfect and don't need it I'll just tell you in case you get arms that are tight you want to check that if it is tight you take a 532nd chainsaw file and you just run it through there through that hole until your hinge pin will fall through like that you want that hinge pin to fall through this arm with no resistance because that's where your arm is riding and is on that hinge pin and you don't want that to be tight in any way <clears throat> all right so we'll go ahead and assemble these arms on here I do not, this is the shim that comes with the arms, it's a 2 millimeter. I don't use that, that's too tight, it binds the arms up. But it's awesome that WRC sends you all these different sizes of shims. The ones I use are the 1.5. So the stock ones that come with the arms are 2, I use these 1.5s. Nothing special about this. Just put the 1.5 shim on the front of the arm, pushing the arm back. Stick that in there. For the D block, I actually use the same exact pill as I do for the A block. So, or the C, the D block uses the same pill as the C block. So all the way down and all the way in. Like that. All the way into the inside and all the way down. This gives you the lowest roll center at the lower arm. As well as giving you the narrowest pivot that we can possibly have currently with this car. It gives the narrowest pivot. <coughs> So to me, with testing I've done, I still obviously am always testing and trying to figure and learn more stuff, but currently, this is the best setup that I have found. Um, it is a little bit less toe than if you ran the D-block middle and that inside like that. That would be like 3 degrees of toe if you did that. So running this inside is a little bit less toe. But I found that it actually works better. I feel like the car rolls the corner better like this with less toe. And I also feel like it squares up out of the corner really well. So I tried both locations and I strongly feel that this, this is the better location. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and bolt on the D block. Now you don't want to have the D-block crazy tight. There's definitely when you bolt this D-block on, you want to check. See, look at that. This is why you build it one piece at a time and not all together to check for bind. You want to bolt it together and you want to make sure every single piece has no bind. Since I tighten that D-block, even with the 1.5s instead of the 2s, it's still too tight. I could have used 1.25s. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back these this D block off on the screws about half a turn. And I'm just going to back it off until I can just feel just a little bit of play back and forth in this arm. That's, yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Tiny bit of movement in that arm. And now there's just like, I mean, absolutely zero bind. That's, there's no resistance whatsoever. That's what you want out of every part on the car. You want zero resistance like that. Do the same thing the other side. Just loosen that. This one's much tighter, so I'm actually going to have to back that C block off a tiny bit. There we go. That's good. 
There's no resistance in those arms now. That's what you want. Okay. Next, I will show you the modification I do to the sway bars. Hopefully this comes through the video pretty well. So when you put that sway bar on there, the arms are nice and level. I like to do my sway bar adjustments at level arm because that way it droops down, droops up, and this is like the neutral position at center. So when you put that sway bar on there, you can see that that sway bar is not coming centered where that link is at. And when you push the arms up, they actually push the link out. As the arm goes up, the link goes out. So with it already being out, not centered, the link's already angled out. Then it comes up travel. It just shoves that link right into that side of that arm and binds it up. So here's what I do. I take the sway bar and I literally just grab a hold of it and just push it in. Just bend, just bend it in more. And I'll lay it on there. And I'll try to get it to where it's absolutely centered with the screw hole there. I actually went too far, so you just bend it back a little bit. Stick it on there, look at that, right over top of the screw. Right over top of the screw. That's exactly what you want. Now this is a stock sway bar 2.7. There's very little track conditions you're gonna use this sway bar on, I think. Unless you run on a high grip track all the time, you'll want this. But my go-to sway bar is a 2.6. And on a loose track, 2.5. But since this sway bar hasn't been modified, I'm using it for the video so that you know um, how I'm modifying my sway bars. Because all my other ones I have have already been done, so I can't. It wouldn't be helpful just to grab one of those and bolt it on. So for the video, I'm using this one. So now that you got the angle of the sway bar right, the next thing I do get the right tools Sorry about that. Not very prepared, I guess. Got that ready, so you got a cutoff wheel on the Dremel. Then you're going to need to get a nice dial caliber. And I'm going to set this at 4 millimeters, and I'm going to cut 4 millimeters right off the end of this sway bar. It's pretty simple to do. Just I use these to, got to mark my spot. You can even see that. Yeah, you can. Put the sway bar on there. Mark my four millimeters and then just cut that off.
lie, but that cut didn't come out very straight. Okay, same thing on the other side. bar has been successfully modified so we'll go ahead and bolt that on Alright, the bolt it on. Now you'll set the uh, set screws for the tension on the bar. Run them in until it's tight. Back it off until it falls. sure that that's check that in and out plate on the set screw make sure that's free it's still a little tight this one felt kind of tight there we go there we go nice and free so now that this is done sway bar you can look at it <clears throat> and see that it lays right over top of where that center where that center of that uh, sway bar link is gonna be it lays right over top of that so now we can get our links prepared cut that flashing off of there go ahead and pop the ball in Make sure the ball is free and there's no bind in that. Nice and free. That's awesome. I use the short set screws on this and I'll Supposed to use those long ones. That don't do that. Could be a goon like me and do that. That sway bar link is done. You can just drop it right in there. Take sway bar screw. Put that on there. I'll go ahead and finish this other one. Pop all in. 
Or drop the ball, that's good too. Checking to make sure it's nice and free, which it is. Man, they've really made some huge improvements on this kit. It is awesome. Super free. Alright, now then you can put this one down in there. And looks like they sent a reverse threaded shock screw, which they did that on one of my other kits. This is a reverse threaded shock screw. These sway bar links use the same as the screws that go here for the shocks. The black one is a standard thread, silver is reverse thread, so you don't want to get a black one for that. You don't want to use a reverse thread for that. <clears throat> I mean, you probably could, and it would be fine, but I'm changing it out because I have some. Okay, so stick that in there. These are pretty soft going in there, so I'm going to do them by hand and not use a drill on these. Now then, so let's set these sway bars. So, if you're using the standard C block that comes with the car, then you'll set these flush after cutting four millimeters off. You'll just run that flush and tighten it down. Because I'm running one millimeter narrower pivot, it moves them arms in. So I'm going to use one millimeter no, I don't get crazy to measure it, but about one millimeter of sway bar sticking out there is what I'm going to have on this. I don't cut five millimeters off just in case I ever want to run the wider pivot again. I don't have my sway bars all ruined. So I'll tell you the, the whole idea behind setting these links is you just want them sh completely straight up and down with your arms level. You want that link completely straight. That's your idea on setting those. So that way, you droop down, zero bind, all the way up, zero bind. So, that is completely free. You're not going to be able to build a more free suspension than that right there. And you can go plenty of up travel. That Your shock will bottom out before you ever get to this much up travel before that sway bar link hits the uh, arm. So that's perfectly built rear arm setup. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go ahead and bolt the sway the uh, shock tower on, I guess. will be need for a couple extra screws because the kit comes with screws to mount your wing right here to the bulkhead. I will be mounting my wing here so therefore I need I'm gonna have to have my own screws for this and then again to mount the wing I'll need my own screws because I'll be mounting up here and not through the end of the bulkhead so I'll be using a nut and bolt system on this so I'll need my own screws for that so, let's see what we got here for screws
two of these in. And I'll have to get two more out for the shock tower. <clears throat> Check this by hand. We can go ahead and install the rear body mount. Super tight in there. I'm not gonna run that one in all the way. Finish it by hand. You don't want to strip the that out. Even though that plastic's pretty sturdy feeling, still want to be careful on those. Okay, we get a couple extra screws out here for the shock tower. I said you're gonna use bolts to go all screws to go all the way through with a nut on this back side so you're gonna need four of those and it comes with button head ones I like to use cap heads for this if I have them that's what I'll be using Trying to find the right length is the uh, tricky part. That looks pretty good. Okay, screws, I like to use fancy, pretty, colorful bling here and there on my car, so I use these pretty blue lock, aluminum lock nuts on that. <coughs> okay, so, like I said, I use the second hole up that I drilled is the one I use. Because it's hand drilled, you kind of have to finesse it a little bit to get all the screws through the holes and stuff. There we go. So, on the, uh, I know these are lock nuts, but I still will drop a uh, drop of Loctite into each one of these. Like I said, I came from HB where that car has like 40 lock nuts on there. Everything is captured with a lock nut on the HB car. 
and we Loctited every single nut on that car because if you didn't, they would still back out. So, I, that's a habit. It's just extra security to go ahead and add some Loctite to anything that's secured with a nut or anything that's metal to metal also. And they're all started. I'm going to get my nut driver and just secure them all down. Like I said, that's raising the wing mount 10 millimeters from its stock location. Much more stable, much more traction, a lot easier, funner car to drive versus the rear end feeling pretty loose. Some people like it like that. I am definitely not some people. I do not like it like that. There we go. Nice secured wing mount. <clears throat> so our uh, WRC wing mount comes with these plates. You got a 2-6 that you can angle the wing, and you got a 4-4 four four that just is a 4 millimeter spacer. I use I use the 4-4s four always on mine. So just to be clear that raising that 10 millimeters is still still use this 4 millimeter piece that comes with our wing mount. Alright, so then the next thing we'll do is secure the center CVA. <coughs> Sorry about my cough. I had stupid uh, COVID a few weeks ago and I cannot get rid of that cough every since. So using, for the center drive shafts, I like to use this copper grease on this, all this disjoint stuff here. This is just going to make, it's just an anti-wear grease. It's going to make it last longer. It makes a big mess. It's something else it does. But, like I said, it. It's going to add a little bit of life to these high dollar CVAs, so kind of deal with the uh, mess that it makes right here. I like to make sure it gets in the groove where the pin goes and down in that barrel where this barrel goes. So you push that through there and then work it around and then just coat the whole thing with copper grease. I'll wipe my fingers off here. Okay, now then I'll just put it inside the cup and kind of move it all around. Just work the grease all around. And then I will uh, drop in the pin. When you get the pin put in, you want to go to make sure that you double check your CVA and make sure there's no bind in that. It's nice and smooth all the way around. I had had some of my earlier kits that um, there was some burrs in there from like the drilling of this, all these holes and stuff. There was burrs and I had to clean them up with the Dremel. It looks like they have started doing a much, much better job. And have resolved that issue as well. Seems like every issue I've had in the past is starting to be resolved. So that is awesome to see. 
All right, now you're gonna take the retainer clip. What you're gonna do is just get that first edge over. And then I just like to use my nail and spin this. And just keep rotating until it pops all the way on there. Boom. Just like that. And you have your CVA secured. Now that you've got the CVA on there, I will take a rag and I'll wipe off some of this excess grease that's outside of the cup that's not down inside there. That's just going to fling everywhere. I'll wipe some of that out of there. Now that you've bolted it, you've got it actually secured together. You, the grease is in there where you need it to be. Having grease out here isn't going to gain you anything. So there's that. <clears throat> I think we'll end this video right here at this stage. And we'll save the rear hubs and turnbuckles for another video. So that is... We're in build. Yep. So we'll to be continued for part two to finish the rear suspension with the rear hubs and camera links and stuff.